have Scott Reeder. How's it going, man? I'm good. All right. How's out there in Cali, man? Oh, it's pretty hot. It's getting up there. We've had a few days where I live in Banning, which is about 20 miles out of Palm Springs. And it's getting up to like 106, 110. Ah. Not too bad. I mean, I've seen 129 before. That's freaking hot. We're in South Louisiana. It gets pretty hot down here. I think the difference is the humidity down here is so much more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah, you're here wearing it like a blanket. Usually a dry heat. We're, we're getting some humidity today, and it's a little sticky, but it's not bad. I saw recently, uh, it looked like y'all had a fire out that way, man. It was, uh, all the horses. Yeah, and... it started at our neighbor's house. Hey. I, I don't know if somebody flicked a cigarette into the cattle guard that's over there. But it looks like that's where it started in the cattle guard, and it just swept right up the hill. And there were bombers all over the place dumping the FOS check. They had a big wood pile for the firewood, oh. and it got covered with phosphate. I don't oh, think it's going to burn too good. <laughs> That's got to be terrifying when that's going on. Oh, man. If it caught the trees around our houses, we'd be toast. The studio would be gone. The house would be gone. Uh, so, you know, you grab a couple of things. I usually grab my dad's ashes and his guitar and maybe some computer drives and some photos, and that's about all you can do. Uh, it's kind of like us with uh, the hurricanes. and When they're coming, you just, you know. Hope for the best and yeah, get yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Man, All right, I can't so let's uh, let's uh, start with uh, you you started with the Obsessed. Actually, there was another band before the Obsessed, but that was your first national band. Yeah, I mean, I started playing in bands in high school, probably around eighty one. I was probably a sophomore in high school. Yeah, and, and like us, we don't count some of those bands. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was this punk band called Subservice, and um, that led to a band called Dead Issue when I first started playing with Mario Lolly. And I was actually playing drums in those bands. And our bass player, Carrie, couldn't continue. His, his parents were clamping down on him. And um, so I bought his bass from him. And we got Alfredo, who was later in Queens of the Stone Age and Caius, uh, to play drums. So he was actually the first drummer I played with. Alfredo. And Me and Ben have an Alfredo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love that guy. And then our singer wasn't working out, so we started a new thing called Across the River. That's, that's the one I thought we started playing Across shows with SST bands. Like, we, we got um, stuck. Stuck. We, we were fucking can i cuss on this absolutely oh, yes. yes okay <laughs> um, it's internet radio <laughs> we we were playing with saint vitus uh, through black flags booking company global management or something like that yeah and we were stoked i mean saint vitus was the shit yeah and uh, we'd signed a record deal with sst but we broke up and and then a couple of years after that you know i'd met wino through that and uh, we were jamming for years when I moved out to L.A. I was working in studios um, as a recording engineer. He finally called me after we'd been jamming for a while and, and told me about The Obsessed. He had a bass player that was doing The Obsessed. And the guy was in a motorcycle accident. And he was in a coma. And he asked me if I could do this tour in Germany and record an album at the end of the tour. And you were like, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I was trying to be the responsible career guy being recording engineer. And my wife said, you know what? I know that your heart's, you know, with playing bass. That, that's what you do. And we've always made ends meet. You got to go for it. Yeah. And that was it. My wife pushed me into it. And that was probably the biggest life changer for me, thanks to Wino and my wife. That's awesome that she supported you that much. Yeah. 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 She's been there every step of the way from the Across the River days. Right. We're coming and not up to, on not 30 years married in October. Right. Oh, and not to interrupt, but I, I, we should say we should appreciate our wives for letting us do this thing that we're doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. It, it takes a special woman to put up with us. Embrace Indeed. this, you know? <laughs> yes. It's hard being married to a musician. That, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, a, a lot of girls, they want the... I don't. I don't want to say the rock star, but that guy. That's well. They want the there. rock star until they meet the rock star and realize he's not that cool. <laughs> but they don't want him to be gone all the time, right? And right. Have other people around him, and you know, it, it takes a special woman, a, a very secure woman, to 
say, you know what, go for it. Right. And that's awesome. And I'm was. so thankful for my wife being there behind me and next to me every step of the way, you know. Right. So how'd you, so how'd you transition into uh, Caius? Um, when I was in the Obsessed, let's see, we, we'd been touring in Germany a few times and I was introduced to Brandt. I mean, we came out of the same scene, but those guys were way younger than I am, eight years younger. So I wasn't really aware of what they were doing. And I heard the Wretch album. I didn't really dig that too much, but I was stoked that somebody from the desert was actually getting out there and doing something. Right. And uh, I was introduced to Brant, and he got us on this tour. It, it was Caius, The Obsessed, and Wool, which was the Scream guys after Dave Grohl split and joined Nirvana. That was a good and career three, move on his part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, Wool was a great band. Scream was a great band. But yeah, Nirvana kind of, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, say it, was, it was a good career move. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in retrospect. <laughs> so we're playing, these are three great bands touring the West Coast. And there were a couple of shows where we were literally playing to each other and the bartender and the sound man. <laughs> it was it was crazy. If those three bands right, right. were together did, did, right. today, <laughs> yeah, it'd be phenomenal. Um, and so it, we got up to Washington. Uh, we played in Seattle, and this okay. This is 1992 because we're, we're touring for Blues for the Red Sun. I I joined the band before Blues for the Red Sun came out. Um, oh wait, 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 we're not we're not there yet. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. We're Go almost ahead. There. <laughs> but all the Seattle we guys were there. All. Dave Grohl, I think Chris Novoselic was there. Um, we saw a couple of Soundgarden guys walking down the street. It was just like, holy shit, this is like grunge city right Central. here. <laughs> yeah. And um, so anyway, afterwards, I, I rode home with the Caius guys, and Nick rode home with the Obsessed guys. And they hit That's me up on because... the way home. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, they they hit me up on the way home. Um, I think we were probably not even an hour into the drive, and they're like, "So, what do you think?" <laughs> and at that point, the obsessed was about to sign with Columbia Records, and I politely turned them down. I said, "Man, things are going really good right now. I don't, don't want to desert what's going on, you know." And um, probably. Maybe a month or two later, Brant called me. I was at work doing my engineering stuff in LA. And he said, dude, I know you don't want to join the band, but we fired Nick and we've got some big gigs coming up. Can you at least fill in until we find the right guy? I'm all, fuck yeah, man, that'll be fun. <laughs> so probably that weekend, my wife and I went down and we played at Josh's house. And I think it was in the garage. And that day after practice, me and Josh jammed a little bit and we threw together what became Space Cadet on Sky Valley on the very first day. Nice. <laughs> that's nice. Well, that's a good yeah. chemistry, apparently. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you know, whole... with chemistry, you know if it's going to work or not right off the bat. Yeah. So. yeah. so that night there was a barbecue and I asked my wife, what do you think about moving back to the desert? And she's all, I would fucking love to move back to the desert. I said, okay, well, that's it. I went back on that Sunday. I had a rehearsal with the Obsessed, and Wino came at me. <laughs> He's all, so how did it go? <laughs> like, Dude, it, it was pretty cool, man. He's all, so what are you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to join these guys. And I, I told him I would finish up the tours that we had coming up already booked. He's all, no, 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 it's cool. We'll, we'll deal with it. He was totally cool. That's awesome. They they yeah. did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was it. the The first like kind of performance I did was the Green Machine video, and then nice. the first show was the record release party for Blues for the Red Sun. We had a show with Body Count during that whole cop killer. Thing. Oh wow, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> that's kind and of and then crazy there was combo. this this huge music convention in L.A. that was called the Concrete Foundations Forum, I think. And we played with a bunch of crazy bands, Skew Siskin, and I, I think Crowbar was 
there. Uh, Carp from Cobar. Right. That's one of our friends from down here. Hometown boys there. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd have to find the, the roster from that one. But there were some amazing bands that played that night. That was a huge crowd, just like this this huge hotel ballroom just packed with people. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, man. Th- this is going to be awesome. I kind of miss Caius at that time. And then, like, Caius has taken on a life of its own afterwards that just I, after the split I, well yeah i mean like now y'all are held in such you know honor yeah, yeah but things you know, were just starting to catch on in the states i mean in europe we were crushing over there and i kept telling those guys because i'd been over there what maybe four times with the obsessed and when i joined kaius i was like we have to fucking get to europe and it I, I don't know if management just didn't know how to make that step, didn't have the connections to make it happen. But yeah. once we got over there, it was just boom, boom, boom. We we played the Dynamo Festival I, in front of 100,000 people. Yeah, there's a, I think there's YouTube video of that, right? I, I don't know about the Dynamo Festival. I've seen the B- Bizarre Fest, though. Yeah, I think that's the only yeah, time. Yeah, that was towards the end. Yeah, and you, um, the you Dynamo had no Festival shoes was our on. very first show in Europe. <laughs> And we played for 100,000 people, and, man, it, it was insane. And we, we did really well in Germany, and, and things weren't really catching up in the States until the end. Um, you know, we'd play clubs, and they, they wouldn't be packed or anything. But towards the end, we, we did a tour with White Zombie. We went through maybe half the States. And um, on the way back, let's see, we ended up with White Zombie in Florida. And then we booked a bunch of shows to make our way back home. Gas money. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, every show was sold out. And I was going, holy shit, here we go. It's starting to catch on in the States. And it was just getting good. And we went back to Europe, did some shows with Soundgarden. And and then that was it. We, we parted ways right after that. I was devastated. If, yeah. And, and like you said earlier, if y'all went back now... I mean, it would just be, you know, so like I say, it was just it, catching years later. I mean, it must be awesome, yeah. though, to know that it has taken on a life of its own to this new, I mean, yeah. like, you know, it's just, I mean, you're, you, one thing I like about you is you go into Caius World on Facebook and you, you actually interact with fans yes. and talk to them. And, oh, and, man, and, I'm stoked that anybody gives a shit. Here we right, are it's living 20 years, past, 25 years right. down the road. It, it's like I say, it's taking on a new life, you know, it's just like, damn. Yeah. And I was kind of late to Caius, you know, honestly, because in, in, in the mid-90s, I was playing more thrash and, and stuff like that. Yep. And then it yep. was around 2000, 2000, uh, pretty much Napster days. <clears throat> and uh, my yep. roommate was like, man, you got to check out this band, Caius. I was like, Caius, what the hell is that? He <laughs> puts it on, and I'm like, this, I, okay, give me a minute. And I was like, oh, this is great. And it kind of yeah. got me into that whole genre of, of the stone rock and everything. And it definitely that. changed my perspective as a musician. I play guitar. Yeah. and. Like yeah. when yep, I heard yep. when I heard Sky Valley, uh, my friend Matt showed it to me, and I was like, "What? Yeah, <laughs> and doing I, this? this?" And is actually, amazing. we me me and Ben were in a band. Uh, I would say we were, what song do we used to cover? We used to cover a uh, Super Scoop. Yeah, and we used to play. Oh, right it was like two thousand two, two thousand, yeah, yeah, and nobody in the club would get it. Yeah. We'd play it, and we'd do the end like dying, dying. <laughs> and we would just drag it out forever, and and the whole club would just be like, "This is terrible! Like, what are y'all doing?" So, <laughs> hey, what kind of pooch is that I'm hearing in the background? That's my uh, miniature schnauzer. His name's Remy. Yeah, oh, nice. And he busted in and won't leave. So. <laughs> I should have brought Scooter over here. With yeah, as I was going to ask you about Scooter. <laughs> How's he doing? She's just she doing, chilling. She yeah, she's coming up on fifteen. Mm. Come on. Oh wow. man, she's she's having. Breathing problems. I I know that our time together is kind of precious right now, so it, it's it's bittersweet, you know. Yeah. But I'm enjoying every moment. Man, she gets pissed if I don't take her out to feed the horses. <laughs> <laughs> Renee comes outside carrying scooter. You forgot somebody. Oh, it's too fucking hot. <laughs> she doesn't care. No, nope. gotta ride with daddy. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, man. I, I wanted to ask you. Uh, what about the Metallica tryout? Because, I mean, uh, that, you know, had to be pretty cool. I know you've known those guys a long time, but how'd you, yeah. how was that? Surreal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even though I knew those guys and we toured together, 
to jam with those guys was like holy shit i think the first song we played was fuel and i'm sharing a mic with kirk hammett doing background vocals crazy and, <laughs> man it, it was just you, you look across right and james, james hetfield <laughs> fucking singing it. it it was just like sensory overload it was crazy yeah um had a great time i thought i had it in the bag <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've uh, that, I, I've heard that, that trio from, guy. Uh, I mean, he's he's pretty good. <laughs> he's amazing, and he's the nicest guy in the world. Right, and he's we so both cool. endorse yes. Warwick bases, so I see him all the time, and yeah, he's awesome. And they couldn't have picked a better guy for the job. Right, and the fact that he did that Jocko the movie out of his pocket yeah. was really, yeah. really that that just sold. I was like, man, he's yeah, so good. that was amazing. I hadn't met him before, and I went to see their first big show in L.A. at the Coliseum, and. Like, I'm watching the show going, fuck, man, I was that close. <laughs> and afterwards, there was this this fenced-off area, the VIP area, and everybody's waiting for their chance to meet Metallica. And this gate opened, and Trujillo walked in, and he was way far away, but he saw me through the crowd, and he's all, reader. And he just, like, plowed through everybody and gave me a hug, and he's all, come on back, man. And we went back and had beers, and there was nobody back. There was the band, um, one of Rob's friends, their video director, Wayne Isham, and my old bandmate from The Obsessed, actually, Greg Rogers, who was working with Wayne Isham. And that was it. There was like this whole city back there set up for the guys, and those were the only people back there. So we had some quality time, and Rob is the nicest guy in the world. I, I can't speak highly enough of that guy. Right, yeah. I mean... Like I say, just to jam with them, I'm sure that was great. You know, I mean, of yep. course, you know, if you'd have got in life changing money, that, that'd that been great. But they, picked yeah, the, but in retro, that they, they picked the right guy, you know. Yeah, for, they for thought the, they were going to be able to like play on weekends and then go home. And I'm thinking, you know what, their crew is like a moving city, they can't send the whole crew home and then just bring the crew out on weekends. That's not going to work. And I was right, once they hit the road, they're out there. Yeah, they're and, they're a freaking corporation. I mean, and while while they're out there on tour for a couple of years, I was going you know, when big life event stuff happened, like a, a family member dies. I'm like, man, I would have been on the road right now. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah, so, that's the thing about so being on the road, I, I had to like compensate in my mind that this is better being <laughs> home. <laughs> but it would have been fun. I, I would have made the most of it, and my wife would have been stoked. It's all good, but yeah, no regrets. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, at least you got. I haven't been in the room playing battery or anything with Metallica, you know. And I grew up listening to them, so. Yeah. I wanted to Pretty. ask you about the new uh, the Fireball Ministry stuff, man. We uh, saw y'all released a track recently. I was checking yeah. out the uh, very good video for it earlier. Back to Earth. That's my favorite song on the record. Um, Tasty bass. Yeah, lines we've been. Sure. Yeah, he, ah, he, cheers. He, I, I sent you a message uh, after I heard it, and I was like, "You held back on that first uh, two verses." And then the, the, <laughs> yeah. the third and first verse, you started brooting it up. I was like, that's my boy. There he goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff on the record where I'm just kicking back and supporting. There's some fills and stuff. There's some parts where I step out a little bit. But as I get older, I just want to do what's right for the song. And some of these heavier songs, it's better if you just like stick with the riff. Um, there's some stuff that I contributed where they're doing my riff. It, it, it's all good. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, you got, really you, you got to play for the song. You know, yeah. and I'm I'm an older bass player too. Is it's like after you've done a lot of chops, I mean, you got to play for the song. We've already proven that yeah. we can play. You know, it's not yeah, like Sky that. Valley. I was a kid, and I was just like, right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I can do. And then you get older, and you're like, well, let's just play for the song. But yeah, I know. I, I want to ask you about something real quick. Um, I used to call this band Unit. When I started mm -hmm. learning Spanish, it should be Unita. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> Correct? Yep, yep. But everybody I know calls it Unita. Okay, so y'all did an album that was not released, but pretty much was released. I mean, I think everybody in the world has it at this point. Yeah, anybody that wanted it got it. Oh, I mm -hmm. think everybody has. And <laughs> They're I, talking about releasing it finally, and I don't know how that's going to work because it's out there you know well that's what uh i sent arthur a message a while back and he said you know it's about to you know happen but i will say you know i love the kaya stuff but that album i don't know what i just i freaking love that album i mean i think that is one of the best albums of all time 
And and Rick Rubin did that with y'all, right? He wasn't the producer. Um, George Draculius was the producer guy. Okay, well, I thought it was Rick, so we're setting the record straight now. I see a lot of yep, guys yep. saying Rick Rubin did it, and I was like, nope. Okay. Now George had worked with um, Tom Petty at that point. Um, while we were recording, I think Rick Rubin was working System of a Down on probably Toxicity. Yeah. We actually shared a studio during the mix time and got to hang out with those guys a bit. So what, what happened with the, the release and everything? Well, Rick Rubin has his little label, American Recordings, and apparently he signs a contract with a mother label. When we signed with him, he was at Columbia. So when we're setting up the album, we were getting the artwork together and, and making relationships. That's some, some people I already knew there, and everything was a go at Columbia. And then maybe a month before the record's supposed to come out, he picks up shop and moves it over to Island Def Jam. So their rock roster was like some 41 and maybe Lynch Mob. Nope. And that's that might be it. They didn't give a shit about rock and roll, you know? Right. Um so it got shelved. They didn't want to put it out. So we had the option of taking a pile of cash or taking the record, oh, yeah, owning the masters to the record, right. which is what I voted for because we could have taken that to any label and, shot and it put around. it out. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody thought, oh, somebody's going to buy this record. So let's take the cash. And then somebody's going to buy the record, of course. And I was outvoted. <laughs> And so that was pretty much the death of it for me. Nobody, nobody wanted to shell out the money for it. I mean, so much money went into that record. It was insane. Man, that, that record is great to this day. I yeah, mean, it's, you know, it's flawless. It, it's almost too perfect. I mean, the drums, I, I don't know. It, it was a weird way of working for me. The drums got all smoothed out in Pro Tools. And then I didn't know that was happening. And I walk in, I'm all, well, what are you doing with the bass stuff? He's all, um, the, the bass is getting chopped with the, the drums. Well, let's hear it. And, and he hadn't listened to it at all. And he put up the fader and the bass was burping all over the place. <laughs> and so I had to redo all the bass tracks, mm. which I, I've never done before. And I, I was, I was upset, but I had my cousin come in and I just got a bottle of red wine and my cousin sat with me for a day and I knocked out all the bass tracks <laughs> right, yeah. and it sounded good. I, I ended up being really stoked. We, we worked our asses off on that record. Well, that's, that's my point is that album is so good that it never got a proper release. It, it personally yeah. pisses me off that it didn't get what, you know, they acclaim, you know, cause everybody's like, Kai is Kai is Kai. And yes, of course. But to yeah. me, that album, I was like, man, this deserves to be heard. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was a more, I don't even know what the right word is. I don't want to say polished. I mean, Nobody's I love Caius for its rawness. Raw. Yeah. Caius was just like, I have the raw tracks from Sky Valley, just bass, drums, and guitar. And that band was on fucking fire. You can and... send them to my email at any time. Then the You Need a Thing, just to me, it's so processed, but I love the songs. Everybody worked their asses off on those songs, and I think it's some of the best stuff that I've heard from John. And yeah, man, it was it's a great album, great album. And uh, it, well, like I say, I asked Arthur if he wanted to come on with you, and I think he's busy. I, I'm not sure what was going on with him, but yeah. um, he said something about it being released. So I hope it, it it does. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the uh, the Sound City doc. Uh, yep, that's a great you, documentary. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> and y'all y'all did Sky Valley and, and Circus there, right? Originally, um, Blues for the Red Sun was recorded there too. Oh no, kids, so y'all did all three. And then Sky Valley, and then Circus, and then the Unita record was actually tracked in that same room too. No kidding. Along yeah. with everything, like from Fleetwood Mac to just God. Cheap Trick, Nirvana. Yes. Yeah. Oh man. Tom I'll, Petty, I think. Uh, I mean, yeah, we the, go the on history. For every listeners, yeah, the history in that room Wikipedia is insane. That. <laughs> yeah. How did you yeah. get contacted for that? And like, uh, what was the recording process like when y'all tracked that song? Okay, I was asleep one night, and somebody texted me at one thirty in the morning. I'm like, "What the fuck?" And I look at my phone. It's Dave Grohl. I'm like, 
Oh. <laughs> well, I'll answer that one. <laughs> so I look at my phone and he said, dude, um, I bought the console from Sound City and I'm doing a movie about Sound City. You want to play on the film soundtrack? And I texted back, fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's all, okay, man, I'll send you something soon. The next morning I got up early to feed the horses and I already had a text from Dave with the demo of the song. It had drums, um, some scratch guitars and scratch bass. And I'm just like, holy shit. I, I, I was filling up horse waters, just sitting there like singing along to it and trying to figure out like a, like an orchestral bass line that would weave through it without just doing what he did for the scratch track. And let's see within a week i was in the studio they already had everything done except for the bass track i was the final thing to go on there and they didn't have any tracks on the tape <laughs> and dave said just go over my bass track he, as he says to butch vig who i didn't realize was going to be the guy you know, I, I walk into this thing and i didn't see any cameras everything's mellow and then i realized oh there's like casino cameras in every corner of the room and then when I started tracking, they brought this big camera right in my face. You can see during the, the video, my hands trembling. <laughs> I mean, it was so high pressure, but Man, it was that, great. That Bush song is killer. pushed me harder than anybody has ever in the studio ever. Um, and, and not in a bad way. He was like, let's try that chorus again. I think you can mix it up a little bit and make that part stand out more, you know? And you know, there's all these people breathing down my neck. Jim Rhoda, who later became my bandmate in Fireball Ministry, was the producer on that thing. So he's breathing down my neck. Dave's standing right behind me. And no pressure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it was nuts. And I had to sit on that secret for months and months. And to play on a track with Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick, ah, who was the dude, first concert yes. that I ever went to. Yes, in, in it was actually my, my first concert brother. too. Um, no shit one-on-one -on -one tour 81 yep and it was the first time that i'd heard Corey's vocals when i went in there i was like, holy shit i was just hoping that what i came in there to play was going to work against what he was doing because i was throwing in some melodic lines and <laughs> some crazy fills and stuff um and it all worked out fuck yeah. when when i finally saw the announcement on twitter i was like Exhale. Oh, yeah, you I called yeah, my brother. Say it now. I can say play it. on a track with Cheap Tricks, Rick Nielsen, man. He's all no way. Uh, yeah. You didn't get to actually meet him or anything? Um, I didn't meet him until the premiere of the movie. There was a screening of the film at the Cinerama Dome on Sunset in Hollywood. And then there was a, a concert at the Palladium. So anyway, there's a, a red carpet at the, at the, the film screening. And before me on the red carpet is Dave Grohl and Chris Novoselic hugging. And there's like all these cameras like CNN and just flashes going off. <laughs> and then me and my wife walk through and, and everybody's just like standing there. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I saw um, Lisa Johnson, who's a great photographer. She's on no way. <laughs> and she took some pictures of us. Uh, <laughs> nice. Man, Cheap Trick is one of my favorite bands. Uh, I'm sure I've seen in some stuff with Rick, and he seems like a nut. Yeah, yeah. So we met him on the other side of the red carpet, and I said, "Hey, man, I, I played bass on the track." He, he's all, "You're the guy," and we hugged, and we got to hang out a little bit later on That's at cool. the show. Uh, they, they had a concert at the Palladium with you know the the Sound City players and. And I didn't get to play my song, which was weird, but... <laughs> so you had to watch sets. from outside? <laughs> or you had to watch from the <laughs> audience, somebody play your song? It, it was weird. Chris Novoselic played my song. Oh, well. I mean, he, he did the set. He, he did a set with, with Dave Grohl playing drums and Rick Nielsen playing guitar and, and Corey singing some Cheap Trick songs. And then they, they played from can to can. And there was some security guy up on the balcony... And he nudged me. He's all, why the fuck aren't you down there? Ah, dude, it's cool. <laughs> right. <man. laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it's your song, but hey. Yeah, because they, they had to keep the group kind of small because they were touring to the, all the film festivals and stuff. Right. Too so many, I would. Many change outs and all that. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I just rolled with it. It's all good. I was so stoked to be a part of it. The song went to number one on rock radio and the album won a Grammy. I've got a fucking Grammy. Hey, you got a Grammy. That's fucking all you deserve one, bro. (laughs) You do. So no, no problem. Yeah. (laughs) Dave Grohl has been a fucking champ every step of the way. When Blues for the Red Sun came out, Nirvana was just blowing up. And he would go to record stores, buy every copy of the Blues for the Red Sun CD, and he would give it to people who he thought could do us some good. He gave it to people at MTV. He gave it to Lars Ulrich. I think he gave it to Glenn Danzig, who we also toured with, and press people. And and so much happened because of that guy. And then for this to come up, and I have a fucking Grammy because of that guy. Right. And And then later on, the Sonic highways thing comes up and it was part of that too and ah, it just I've, I've been saying for the past couple of years that dave grohl is the coolest fucking guy yeah. out there i mean yeah. whether and, you like the food fighters or not or you whether like you like nirvana that dude is straight up just yeah. and has done more for rock and roll yes. than a lot. yeah it, it's yeah. not he's, an act or a stick no he's that's, the real that's the deal guy. and it continues to this very day because it was just announced what a week ago that Fireball Ministry is on Cal Jam 17 with the Foo Fighters. That was actually and, one of our next and questions. Queens of the Stone Age, October <laughs> Segway. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all are uh, planning on that's going to be like an album release for y'all almost, right? Yeah, our record comes out the day before on October 6th. The show's on October 7th. It's about maybe a half hour drive from my house. Oh, that's, oh, that's so easy. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's. Awesome. I could come home and feed the horses and then go back and enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> right. And on that, it's, uh, that's October 7th. Y'all been doing that, I believe. And that's going to be with uh, the Foo Fighters and Queens of the Stone Age and Cage the yep. Elephant and Fireball yep. Ministry and a whole bunch the of obsessed. other awesome bands. The obsessed. obsessed oh, well, well, that's like, I mean, it's, just, it's uh, like old school, yeah. everybody. Yeah. I mean, two, actually three major guitar players in my life, if you count Dave Grohl. Josh Homme and Wino are playing that day, and, and not to mention Jim Rhoda and Emily from Fireball. Right, I mean, just comes full circle. Yeah, like a big family reunion. Yep. Big ass barbecue. Generator uh, party. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I heard about the generator parties. That that must have been something right there. Yeah. So Scott, if anybody wants to check you out, uh, where can we reach you at on Instagram or Facebook or? Instagram is probably the best for non-political stuff. <laughs> Twitter's <laughs> probably the the best for political stuff, and Facebook's kind of a, a mix of both. Um, I, I stay in touch with a lot of people on Facebook. I've I'm at my limit on the the friend list. You know, you get five thousand. Yeah. Um, but if you follow, instead of having two pages like a, a fan page and a personal page i just keep the personal page these days and you can follow and and still we can interact and stuff so it's all good i'm out there every day sometimes i get busy and i don't reply to stuff and probably look like a total dickhead but oh man but i try to respond to everything that comes in you know like i say that's why i send you messages and you know you'll you'll eventually respond and it's like ah you know yep yep but hey man i appreciate you coming on the show and uh fireball ministry new New album's going to drop yeah. on October 7th. October 6th. October 6th. Yeah. Yeah, it's 6th. called Remember the Story. And was that done at your studio? The bass tracks were. Okay, so uh, they recorded somewhere else. But you also have yeah, your own studio if anybody's looking to record. Yeah, it's called The Sanctuary. Um, I've had a few people just recording bass tracks here, which is nice, because I've got so much bass gear here. I'm oh, you got a bison. In front of, what's that? You got a bison. Oh yeah, I'm I'm sitting right in front of it. I've got <laughs> a heart key stack, a bison stack, and an ampeg stack, and then a pile of other ampeg stuff and other heart key stuff. I and would love. To, I think I'm getting I, some Mesa boogie stuff pretty soon. As a so, uh, yeah. bass player, I would love to try that bison, but you're a little bit too far for me to drive over and try it. <laughs> <laughs> and I've actually had people emailing me um, di tracks. For the records, oh, just and then I the reamp devices? it through my stuff and, and email it back. What? You know? That's awesome. It, I wouldn't want to do that because you would hear all my mess ups. Well, I, I would hear them in explicit <laughs> detail. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm not going to send you that. I'm going to send. No, but if you run it through the bison and the ampeg, put that on a file and send it back. It, it's 
easy money for me. <laughs> right. Well, so if anybody needs that done, reach out to Scott Reeder and yeah. he can hook you up. <laughs> Do you have anybody uh, coming up that you're like any bands that you're planning on producing? Um, I've been working on the solo album of Bonnie Betrago from Nashville Pussy. Oh, okay. Um, on. I think I played the She's gig been with coming out a few times and recording her bass tracks here. She sits in the control room with me and and we've run it through all kinds of crazy pedals and a stack of amps and yeah, she's been stoked. Uh, I think she's going to do her Nashville Pussy tracks on the next record out here. Cool, man. Um there's some English band Sons of Alpha Centauri. I'm doing the same thing for them. They they send me their tracks from England and I reamp stuff and I sang on one of their tracks. I did a thing about Standing Rock. Oh yeah. The Black Snake. Yeah. Yeah, and if anybody, uh, if any of the listeners want to check it out, Scott Reeder also has his own solo album he put out a few years ago that you should probably yeah. go to. I'm sure it's on iTunes and everything else. Yeah, if you like Pink Floyd, you'll probably like my solo stuff. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Big fan. Mm-hmm. All right, well, I appreciate you coming on, brother, and uh, you have a good one. Thanks, you guys. You too.